Time now for the Voice of the Land on the Big Play Network with your hosts, Kevin Arnold and Always Positive Jay. Today is all about the highs and lows of summer right here in the city of Cleveland, and we are here to talk about it all on the Voice of the Land on the Big Play Network, also partnered with LPV Productions. We are sponsored by our friends over at Vector Technical. They'll get the right person in the right job the first time. Be looking out for more information on them and how you can get some VTL gear throughout the show. I am one of your hosts, Kevin Arnold. On the other side of the table, it is always Positive J recovering from the death tank, death as tank. it's going to be <laughs> known from here on out. So I guess prayers and well wishes. To everyone else that was in that death, the death tank, not the dunk tank. Yeah, the dunk tank at ESPN Cleveland's block party. We will get into that later on in the show. We will get all the stories from that and kind of summer activity of the of the week. We're trying to focus on one summer activity that's, that everybody's coming back to each and every single week. We're trying to focus on one, shed, shed light on one. I thought maybe today, while it doesn't always happen, dunk tanks sometimes are at some fairs and festivals, County fairs, festival, church festivals, they're all back. What are, we, what are we looking forward to to getting out to those, or what have we already experienced by going to some of those? We'll get into that later on in the show. On the other side of, the, of that proverbial glass, it is our producer extraordinaire. He is what Jarvis was to Iron Man Audio is to Voice of Land. It is Peter Tell. Peter, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. We're – it. I'm gotta tell you guys, it's been a long week. So this, yeah. just bear with us, because if I look like I'm exhausted, it's not a. It, you're you don't have to adjust your devices wherever you're watching, or maybe if I sound tired on the recorded audio on Google, Spotify, Apple, you don't have to. You don't have to think that you need to get a new phone or device. I am absolutely exhausted. Again, we're gonna get into more of that as the show goes on. As the title says, though, we need to get into the highs and lows of a summer here in, in Cleveland. We kind of start with somewhat highs and lows when we start these shows and we do our prayers and well wishes as well. I, I kind of already said it's more of a fun prayers and well wishes from my end for the, everybody that was in that death tank. I would also just quickly say uh, I don't want I'm never I'm not going to get into this and take us off track. I just want to say. I always we always pray and give well wishes to everyone in our country, around the world, and always pray for progress, progression, not regression. That's all I'm going to say. Jay, any prayers and well wishes on your end? Well, yes, I have two, two big thank yous, and I wasn't even going to tell you this because I want to surprise you. Thank you and the, all your crew for everything you did on that Thursday party for at the ESPN Block Party. That was phenomenal. I talked to your boss Friday, Matt Fishman. He was unbelievably proud of you, man. Unbelievable. Like, you sh take a bow, bro. That was – I never no. – dude, this man take the worked me. all <laughs> day. Like, I'm just out there having fun, and this Kevin just running around doing this, grabbing this, grabbing waters. Next thing you know, he's got to grab this. He's over here. He's doing this. He's doing that. I don't know how you got that TV to work. The TV broke. We can't find the remote. There's not a button on this thing but an input button, and – my man got it working, dude. We went to Rob's apartment. Rob Lorenzo, oh, the, like, the, the media man, the digital media manager, uh, he does all the social media for ESPN Cleveland. But he just traveled out to Chicago for our ESPN Chicago station and the company, our Milwaukee station. He was out there doing some social media stuff with them. We went to his apartment. It was just up the hill from the flats. Uh, got his TV down and used a used a newer TV. But I mean. I seen you downloading an app to try to get a remote. Going, I, I'm like Kevin's I, doing everything he can. I, was I thought trying. you got it working. I, but. I was I was trying. I'm and and thank you, Jay. I mean, it, you know, Rachel, uh, Rachel D. Moran and and Holly Wetzel, who put a lot of work in, and you know, the content team who was promoting it like crazy. The MCs, what we call MCs, those that are those that work closely with our partners, kind of keep their uh, partnerships and and kind of give them unique ways of how they can get their company's message out. Um, them kind of connecting all of our partners. There was a great VIP event that was happening while this was all going on. And a bunch of awesome money raised for Muttley Crew, yeah. a great foundation. I mean, and shout out to uh, Muttley Crew and even and Pause Play, who was a, a doggy daycare. They were kind of sponsoring the dog park that's right there in the flats in that, that center parking mm -hmm. lot, kind of between the side where Punchbowl Social is, the other side where Browns Fit and Lago um, are kind of right down there as you kind of come underneath the bridge, the 
famous bridge that was once in uh, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Yes. Uh, but yes, hats off to you guys, man. Yeah, thank awesome you. job. Thank that you. was like I've been to a lot of ESPN events and I've had a blast yeah. at some of them, like unbelievable times. This was the best ever. Second place ain't even close, and that's not saying anything bad about second place. No, it, it, it somehow it got it, it went off, and it was it was a great event. There has been so much great feedback from it. I mean, well, Tony Grossi singing live I, was I mean, the uh, moment of the night. I was just like, I was sitting thought next to the guy. Next thing I know, I'm like, blah blah blah. I look over, he's gone, and then he's up on stage singing. I'm like, oh my god, Grossi, th- loving it. Things you never thought you'd see, but no. I mean, I know. And again, like you said, a lot of good money raised for Motley Crew. I think you had you were kind of texting us about uh, the I, animal uh, rescue element today too. Oh yes, so. Now, boy, I paid for half the Rizzo dogs' uh, adoption fee, and they all the dogs got adopted, or not adopted out, but they all have applications for all of them. And then the, today, I'm going up to the store, and I see this cat on the edge of a corner right by my house. And normally when I drive past the cat in the neighborhood, they, they're by the street, they take off running, and this cat is just laying there. I'm like, he don't look right. So I'm, let me see if he's there when I come back. And I come back, and I pull right up to the curb next to him, and I'm like, you know, hey, hey. And he's just sitting there, not moving. I'm like, he's not looking good. He's panting. Cats don't pant normally. They will, but when they do, they're in distress, and they're in bad condition. So I go home, tell Tiffany, who is the ultimate cat lover of all cat lovers, and we, she just starts calling around these people that she knows through Facebook and these animal people. And sure enough, our friend Deb from Amol Hospital – Animal Hospital on State Road in Parma took the cat. We she this cat like it was just sitting there. It wouldn't take water or nothing, and it was just panting. And I put the cage down. It just pulls right in there, like walk right in, no hesitation. And when an animal's in, when an animal needs help, it'll let you know. Like mm-hmm. you just yes. got to answer the call when it's yeah. there for you. So we take her over there. She immediately gets a few some shots for to get her some because she was super dehydrated. And this cat like instantly like. It like came back to life. You saw it, and she's yeah. like, "Don't worry, we're gonna get tested, and after we get it tested, we'll get an adoption. Out. We'll get it adopted out." So, hats off to Deb from Amal Hospital and uh, Parmont State Road. Absolutely. I mean, and we are all animal lovers on this show. It doesn't matter what type of animal it is, and especially when you have pets right now. When we're going back and forth with this hot heat and, and humidity if you're hot and you you can't bear it they can't bear it. they they can't bear it. they're covered in i mean a lot of these animals are covered in a lot of fur some have less than others but it's it's dangerous out there so please make sure you're taking care of your pets and um you know seeing animals in distress if you can help out try to help out you you always got to be careful sometimes you never know what those animals have gotten into and you want to keep yourself safe as well but if you assess the scene you feel like it's safe Try to help the animals, and you got pets at home. Make sure you're taking care of them during the this humid summer that we always go through here in Cleveland. I was just going to add, if we, you know, make sure if it's your pet, you know about the breed too, because yes. because some pet, you know, some dogs have that they need that extra fur mm-hmm. because it cools them all. You know, it's weird yeah. how that happens. And I've I've seen people that are like, oh no, I'm going to shave the dog because it's hot outside. It's like no, that's the worst thing you can do. Yeah, so yeah. Make make sure you understand. What your pet needs. Yeah. Do your do your research. If you're going to own a pet, <laughs> yeah. research the pet. No matter yeah. what it exactly. is from a fish to a lizard to a cat to a dog, if you're going to own the pet and you're going to take the responsibility on, you better do your research. Take care of them the right way. And, and I mean, again, it is it is the hot heat and humidity. I, I think that maybe the temperature is going to go down a little bit, then go back up. It's This has been a weird summer, and there's been so many highs and lows already. The Guardians are kind of like the example I mean, of the uh, of highs and lows in the sports world, if we're going to look at it this way. And going to title our show this way. Weekend was they were about the only thing that cooled off. Yeah, yeah. And so many Boston fans are in town. You guys know how I feel about Boston fans. If you're just they can get back in their car and get the link out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, and Boston fans travel well, and then so then you bookend your two weekends, especially going into a holiday weekend like next weekend. Now you got to have Yankees fans in town for Friday. Saturday and Sunday, you know they're going to buy up all the tickets because guess what? The fans that jumped on the bandwagon of the Guardians and went to these last three games, they're going to think that they're not so good. They haven't actually paid attention like they say they have and know that this team does go through a roller coaster of a season, and when they get down or they lose a few games in a row – 
they somehow find a way under Terry Francona to come back with a vengeance. It's a young team, maybe reading their press clippings a little bit. He goes so seven and two on a road trip. A very tough road trip, by the way. It's, you beat the Dodgers two two out of three. You beat the Minnesota Twins, who you need to beat two out of three. But you come home and you lose the series to Boston in three straight. Plus, you lost the last one to Minnesota. So it's it doesn't feel very good right now. Very quickly, after a four-game losing streak, this series against Minnesota is crucial right now for the Guardians to kind of to keep the momentum that they have flowing. You know it's not going to go as easily as 7 and 2 on a road trip or winning 18 of their last 19 I mean, or or no what? one wins all their series. No. Like that's rare. I mean maybe the Yankees are doing it this year, but screw them and they can their giant payroll. <laughs> so as young as this team is, the, the, there's triple A teams that are older than our average team age. They're doing very well. Like I got right now I got no complaints. You lost the series you bounce back and you win the series against Minnesota, you're right back in first place where you should be. But you said something, Kevin, that bothered me about this team. They do it all the time. Every single time we start getting people's interest. All right, let's go. Let's get everyone down there. They pack the stadium. You blow it. You got. If you want people in the stadium when they're there, you got to win. This is why this show works so well. Because I was thinking the exact same <laughs> thing. That was the next point I was going to bring up. If Because you said that they're doing very well. We can't really criticize them. I was going to say, to keep things in perspective, and we, uh, we try to do that on this show, in reality, the only issue that I ever take with the Guardians, the Cleveland Baseball Organization, when they were the Indians, now to the Guardians, it's kind of the same thing. We never know what their message is, what their approach is to the season. Then they kind of, we feel like they want to compete, but they're bringing all these young guys up. Oh, well, they're having success. Why? Well, again, you got one of the best managers in, in the history of the game of baseball at the helm and getting these young guys to play. Well, kind of saw it earlier this year. Stephen Kwan was like the, the highlight of the first two series on, on the road. I think wherever they were, Kansas City and somewhere else. Then he's getting interviewed, and he's trying to do too much when he gets at home. When the fans are are ch- uh, chanting Quan, like is it like a, it's the I think it was the people were trying to do it as like the Mighty Ducks chant, like quack quack quack. It was Quan, 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 and everybody was excited at the home opener. I was there, and throughout those series, and he struggled because he's trying to do too much. These guys are on the road; they don't have that noise around them. They're going into someone else's stadium. They don't have the uh, you know the local radio talking about them and the fans kind of getting up about it. You come home again. You may have read the press clippings a little bit. You got you got too amped up, and I I get it. They want to play for this city. They want it's a lot of guys like Jose. Jose is the leader of this team. You saw him when he was kind of hurt in L.A. He was the biggest cheerleader in the dugout. And they kind of follow his lead. Guess what? He signed a team-friendly deal. And I put team-friendly in quotations if you're just listening on the audio part. Because he just wanted to play here in Cleveland. He enjoys doing that. I think a lot of these young guys do, and they like what this organization has built around them and allow them to do when they go out there and play a child's game for money. Don't try to do too much. Just stay being that team. It doesn't matter if the stadium's full or not. And they will. I right. mean, you got the guy right. in charge, the perfect guy in Tito. He'll get those guys on track for sure. And it sounds like I'm, like, hounding on them or it's negative on them. It's just, again, highs and lows of a baseball season, and especially when you got one of the youngest teams, if not the youngest team in the majors. It's going to be a roller coaster ride it, the whole season. It is. You're just hoping for more ups and more downs. And honestly, I'm kind of hoping for more like plateaus. When you kind of have a big high, I'm kind of looking for more plateaus than I am lows because you kind of need to balance out a little bit. You're going to win a couple, lose a couple, win a couple, lose a couple. Then if you can get back to getting on a win streak instead of going on a long losing streak, that is, that's what builds a contending team and not a team that's just fighting for that last playoff spot. And I mean, if, if that's what this team is doing, then that's probably more than we ever thought this team would do this season. It's just you, you get a taste. Those young guys, they want more of it. They got a taste of what winning and success feels like. You know they want more of it. Go find it. If you got a plateau for a little bit to go find it again, 
I'm okay with that. I'm not okay with the, you know, Millennium Force, I'm at the top of the hill, then I'm all the way down at the bottom, like not knowing what's coming next and, and th- that type of thing. So it's, and- it's, a, it's a tough ride, but hey, it's still a fun team. So if people are jumping off just because of these three games at home that they didn't come through with big crowds, those aren't the real fans. The real fans are the ones that go through any mode that they can to watch the team, whether it's on the – uh, Valley Sports, <laughs> or it's on any... You know I was watching this game today. On a crack stream? No. Oh. So ESPN has the game cast where you can yeah. watch, and it has, like, the little scoreboard and says each ball and tells you play-by-play. Play. I watched, I almost watched the entire game on my phone like that today. No. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Valleys. I, I, you know how I've watched <laughs> the last few games? Like, I haven't been around to... I've kind of, like, listened on the radio as we've mm-hmm. been traveling around. We were down uh, with the in-laws this weekend, so was listening more on the radio... Those row games, I was on the MLB app on the game day section, like watching that, hoping that the person scoring the game mm-hmm. is actually putting the pitch in and it, you know, I'm not getting the notifications before it actually happens, you know, that type of thing. That's how I'm watching it. I'm watching just a stationary person and just, if you're just listening, yeah, same thing. I'm just basically sitting in my chair acting like a stationary picture of a batter with imaginary baseballs being thrown through a, a strike zone or around a strike zone and each pitch being kind of carted electronically by the score. Like that's how I have to see this, see this team play. Here's a complaint. I'm sorry. I'm just way off subject. Stop asking the Indians to trade for a catcher. Guardians. Cause guess guardians. Pudge Rodriguez is not out there. Mike Piazza. There is like the hitting and catching catchers. They're just not, no, out, there. not there. Like, just, it's not there. Like it's, it's so rare. Like, there's maybe one or two in the whole league. Was, and everyone's like, we need to get rid of Austin Hedges. We need to get like, dude, he ain't going nowhere. So stop complaining about the guy. He's a great defensive catcher. He can call a game. Can he hit? No, not really. But he's doing what he's supposed to do. A catcher's job is so much more than hitting. He has to call the entire game. He is the yeah. general of the field when he's out yeah. there. Yeah. He's doing his job. So st- get off my guy's back. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I, I want like- him to hit more. I mean, I, I will say that I do get kind of shocked when I see like Austin Hedges hit something to score, you know, have a run score. Like I mean, he actually put a bat on a ball. I kind of relate but, his hitting to when Eric Snow would make jumpers. Yeah. You're like, all right, this guy's here. Yeah. He's got here to, to control the game, play tough defense. Yeah. He's not going to score. But when he does, you're like, all right, here we go. We got to, uh-huh. like, it's like extra. We got, we got, we got a plus out of the, plus out of the deal. I, this, this organization has shown that they're more about the defensive catcher than, mm-hmm. than, than the hitting catcher. I just, I want more length in the lineup in terms of more consistency out of your outfielders. And, and um, when you just have – And our DH, Framble's got to pick it up, man. Yeah. You, you, it's got to be more consistent with your top guys that you are counting on the lineup to make it easier on the guys lower in the lineup because now they're going to get pitches to hit. Because you don't want to face the guys at the top then. You're going to have to face the ones at the bottom. You're going to have to attack them, and they'll make you pay when you do. And if they want to stay up here – because they're getting a great opportunity. You want to stay, you got to start hitting. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to make a trade, and they're going to get someone in here to do your job. Well, speaking of trades, we thought maybe the Cavs would make some trades, but they didn't. They made a pick on Thursday night while the block party was going on. We will talk about that pick, what that could mean for the future of this team. Was it the right move? We will talk about that next right here on The Voice of Land on the Big Play Network. Whether you're looking to hire new talent or start a new career, Vector Technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has helped thousands of job seekers advance in their career with reputable partners throughout Northeastern Ohio. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. With an above average hire in rate of one in four candidates, Vector works hard to connect the right person with the right opportunity the first time. Vector Technical hires for skilled manufacturing and light industrial work and is sure to have a career that you've been looking for. To learn more, visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com. Welcome back to The Voice of Land. Kevin Arnold alongside Always Positive Jay and Peter Tellup. We went to break talking about the Guardians and more so just the highs and lows of what a summer, sports summer, summer in general can be here in Cleveland. A high point. Sometimes a low point for basketball teams in the offseason now, especially in the summer, can be the NBA draft. And the NBA draft did take place on Thursday night. 
we talked last week in our pre-recorded show more so like, do we want them to trade the pick or do they, we want them to take some player in this draft? Just take someone at 14 because you're right at the end of the lottery. And a lot of these last few drafts, they haven't been deep in talent. Not to say that you can't get someone at 14. People have proven like at 13, mm-hmm. 14, 15. I mean, Giannis was pretty low in the draft. I think he was a 13th pick by the... Draymond Green second rounder. Um, who's the center for the Nuggets? Jokic? Yeah. he's. A, I think he's second round pick too. Right. So you can have success down there as long as you have the right people in place. It's only two rounds. The NFL draft is seven rounds. So you already know first three rounds there you're getting starter level talent still like that's how you know the nba used to be seven round drafts yeah the great gunther banky out of germany was once drafted out of there the only player i've ever seen in any sports with my last name drafted by the Cavs. i'm like that's freaking awesome (laughs) (laughs) i mean and that's the thing i mean baseball is what 50 they dropped it to like only five during baseball is like the draft that no one gives a crap about at all because that is the big even your first pick is a complete crap right you can't and you don't know what they'll be for like five years i know but you can't say no one cares like there i actually admire the people that go deep into the baseball uh statistics Mm -hmm. uh analytics of it all but also like the draft prospects and knowing like in the 38th round the Cleveland Guardians select Joe Smith or Joe but, I mean, whatever. If we're being realistic, no one is watching the baseball draft on TV, really. And I mean, I, when I, I say no one, very small amounts of Do people. they put it all on TV? Like, is it on TV? I don't know. It means baseball. They don't like to advertise anything they do for no. fun. So I mean, there's people that, pro- again, we've even said it. I know it sounds crazy, but there's people that don't know who Mike Trout is. Yeah. Uh, but you we know. are talking basketball. We are talking know. basketball. Again, there's 50 rounds in baseball, seven in, in the NFL. There's only two in the NBA, and you know by the time you get to the second round, it's a lot of draft and stash guys. Mm-hmm. It's it's your G, G, League League guys. G League guys you're hoping turn into something. Um, just taking a, a shot on someone, like you do in the fifth, sixth, seventh round in the NFL. So you, by the time you get halfway through the NBA draft, you're already through three rounds of the NFL draft. That's what they're telling you, in, and or at least that's what we've seen talent wise success level wise the amount of people that have success of pe- guys coming in and having that immediate impact you're in the lottery you're hoping that at least the first 15 picks are going to be impactful players for your team the Cavs picked Ochai Abaji out of Kansas I hope I'm saying that right I will make sure I get the pronunciation right I know it's Abaji as his last name sounds like a three and D guy and that's what we thought exactly what we needed that's that's what we kind of looked for can he have success? Do you like that he's more of the 22-year-old senior that went four years through college, or would you have rather have seen the Cavs take the shot on local kid Malachi Branham out of Ohio State, a, a guy like that, not just because he's local, but more so because he was only went through his freshman year. He's one of those one-and-done players. He got the he possible high ceiling. Yeah. I would go – I like exactly what we got. We He's ready right now to come in and he can contribute – He's exactly what we needed, and he's the best player on the best team. Like, what pick do we have again? 14, 15? 14. 14. I mean, what else do you want Mm. at 14? You got the best player on the best team, and he does exactly what your team needs. Good. I'm good. Uh, Peter, are you, like, just in general, are you more so for this youth movement that we've kind of seen, especially more so in the NBA, but, you know, more guys tend to come out as sooner rather than later going to the NFL draft and maybe even kids in baseball, they like when they get drafted out of high school and try to go take their, take their game to the, to the next level. Cause there's that minor league system. Do you like that youth movement or do you like this kind of older, uh, a guy that's older than Darius Garland right now, I think by like three months or something like that, who's won a national championship, but is going to be a rookie, which approach do you kind of adhere to? You know, I think I kind of like the, the older approach right because it shows that they've they've gone through more than just one season with a coach learning a new system so obviously like in high school they're you know they're playing with the high school coach it's very familiar and then if they're just doing one season in college you know i think that we i can't think of the some of the players there's several players that they get into the nba and the the coach they're uncoachable you know lebron has been rumored to be uncoachable because he went right out of high school. didn't Didn't have that. 
It's not know. so much he was uncoachable as he was smarter than the coaches he had. Well, <laughs> most of the time. True. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, I'm, I won't disagree. Like with he's that, a basketball but, genius. He, so. he is. He is. But it, but the whole thing is, you have to, if you're trying to fit into a system, if you're trying to have a culture and a system in place, mm-hmm. then you have to kind of understand how that works too. And I think if they're just playing one year just to get into the NBA, Darius Miles is a perfect example. Yeah, maybe they, maybe they don't really understand that, you know. And there's a maturity level with it too. And so, hey, some kids might be perfectly great doing one year in college and going to the NBA mm-hmm. because it, because their maturity level is much higher. Yeah, like Evan Mobley, he's one and done. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But if we would have got him in his fourth year, do you know how much better his body would be developed? Like that's everyone wants him to do this offseason. Start. Building up like yeah. Giannis, start putting some yeah. weight on him. If he comes out like this guy is like right NBA body ready, like his body is pretty much fully developed. I like that a lot. You guys didn't even know this. I, when you said Darius Miles, I did like the thing on my head that Darius <laughs> used to do. Like, you know, so like, that used I, to I annoy I me so bad. I didn't know what it was. I but. didn't know what it meant. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did that to uh, Ricky Davis when Ricky Davis guys tried to get his triple double by like shooting at the wrong basket and missing or something like that. I, whatever. That was. I remember those days, and that day before, or the year especially before the Cavs got LeBron, but also all those years sitting in the blue, those light blue seats of the Gund Arena and you know losing a lot of games, but somehow they were still like cheering themselves on. I, I'm kind of with you guys. I like more of the, the older guy approach only because, let's, let's face it, LeBron's the exception to every rule. He, he might be uncoachable, guys. He, he might be uncoachable, but for our – Part of that is he, he is smarter than some of the coaches, especially the coaches that the Lakers have tried to tried to roll in. <clears throat> David Blatt. Uh, David, well, yeah, Cavs with David Blatt. I mean, look. Dude didn't play a coach in an NBA game in his entire life. LeBron wasn't listening yeah. to that dude at all. He's like, yeah, whatever, Blatt, this is what we're doing. We're gonna be doing Here's the play. Look, the, yeah, there's there's exceptions to, to every rule. But, I mean, you look at Abaji, he went through that – maturity process of and he talked about it in the press conference he said look going from my junior to senior year like it something clicked like I knew exactly what type of work like I was a good player but I wanted to be great and I wanted my teammates I wanted the program to be great I knew what I needed to do to get my body right get my mind right get my game right and people are starting to tell me that now after winning helping Kansas win a national championship I've reached my peak. Like, there's no way I can get much better. That's more motivation. Like, I know how to use that now because I went through it at a high-profile program in Kansas. I like that. And I'm not saying this guy is going to take his game to an all-star, superstar level. That's not what this team needs, actually. They need a they need a piece. They need a guy that's going to fit into they need his a wing role. wing defender and a guy that can hit the open three. This guy is perfect for it. And don't get me wrong, I've seen his highlights. This dude can dunk too, man. He had a hell of an alley oop in the one highlight I saw. Yeah, but when you and when you got a guy like Isaac Okoro who can do the same thing, mm-hmm. he can jump out of the gym, he can defend, but he can't knock down the three. That's the missing piece. That's where the game is gone. Now he is 6'5, an inch shorter than Okoro and you know, maybe more considered a shooting guard than a uh, a three. And I know that positionless basketball gets thrown around and maybe in a cliche way. But, look, they have three seven-footers on the floor at one time. They have Lori Market in playing the three. And then if you go small and you bring this guy in and he shows he can defend some of those bigger six, seven, six, eight threes, if we're going to go back to positions, the actual small forward, if he can show he can defend that in the NBA, knock down the three, he's going to stick around. That's a role now. That doesn't just make you a, a superstar. Like, that's that's a role. Playing playing defense is an actual role now. I mean, role players, Shaq says it all the time. Those are the guys that win you championships. Of course you're going to need all-stars, but if you put – like, ask Allen Iverson how much he would appreciate having more role players. Because he was an all-star with no one around him yeah. but a bunch of just regular guys, dude. Mm-hmm. He had nothing. Boston does not make the finals. I know we – you know, I – kind of made comments about Boston fans. But to be honest, the Celtics have had a long history of getting the right guys in there. Mm-hmm. You got your superstar type players in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. 
Do you think they get to the finals with them without Marcus Smart playing defense the way he did? Or Al Horford hitting all those threes? No. And they don't get there because you need players like that. So at pick number 14, if you want to go what is considered the young route by making a pick instead of trading for a viable veteran, okay, I'm good with it because you have a guy that's kind of gone through the rigor, the the rigors, the the pressure of winning at a big program, and they won a national championship. Now, winning a national championship is nowhere compared to winning an NBA championship, but the mentality of how hard that is to do, that's more motivation, more of more of a guy that's driven to help his team do what he needs to do to get them to the mountaintop, and that's what we want the Cavs organization to strive for. We don't want to be only up to like the fourth spot in the Eastern Conference. Just because we don't have LeBron, the aspirations should still be, hey, we did it once with whoa, whoa. A, with a superstar. Who don't we have? We don't have LeBron James. And did you hear a little rumor? Of, uh, uh, well, I'm not getting into... Uh, we keep things in reality. I'm not getting into... I know you've been I working like out. I'm, I'm not... I saw the, I saw the, the workouts with came of. We'll talk more about that. Yes. If it, if it actually comes to that, would I take him? Absolutely. Is he here right now? No. And this is a team being built as a team with some young stars. And you know what I love about the their youth movement too is when they go when all these guys come into their prime, all those other teams that are like the I Warriors know. are going to yeah. be coming down. LeBron either is going to be here or he'll be done. Dude, there ain't no no one stopping this team. Like there's who's the the, the team that you're just the juggernaut right now? They're all pretty even. In, in the East, there's really there's really not one. And Father Time is undefeated. LeBron has said it. Uh, LeBron's like Milwaukee's kept... beatable. The Heat, beatable. Yeah. Boston, beatable. I told you, I swear I believe in this. If we were healthy, we could have went further in those playoffs. I don't know if we would have made it to the finals, but I would have put us up against any of those teams in the East. I just want the Cavs, when they play next season, to have that same drive, the same youthful energy that we saw this season. Don't be like, oh, we were just a game away from making it. So I want can... that pain. I want them to feel how close they were and dr- like you said, let that drive you. Drive you to the point that you feel like you should be at. Mm-hmm. You, It starts over. Everybody goes back to zero and zero. You don't get to start where you ended last season. So you better have that same drive. And next the rookie, season. he's been there, man, in college. He, he saw what it took to have to get, win a championship in college. That helps. Yeah. And I would say that the Cavs maybe was, for fans here in Cleveland, was maybe a high of the summer for their, their draft pick. Everybody seemed to love the pick. We got to talk about. Uh, we got to go back now. We got to go back down on the other side of this break. We do have to talk Browns. We haven't talked enough about them, and there is a hearing coming up for possible the potential suspension, which more than likely will happen. But the suspension of Deshaun Watson, how long that could be? There is a hearing coming up this week. We'll talk about that next, right here. You're tuned in to the Voice of Land on the Big Play, Big Play Network. Are you struggling to hire the right talent or maybe even find the right career? Vector Technical makes it easy. Since 1992, Vector has provided Ohio employers with a reliable process for hiring and have helped thousands of job seekers advance in their careers. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. We invest time to get to know each client and candidate personally. Vector places people in job opportunities that they are truly excited about. Interested in learning more? Visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com to see a full list of our current job opportunities and to find out what Vector Technical can offer you. Get your gear at voiceoftheland.com forward slash shop. Again, welcome back to the Voice of the Land here on the Big Play Network. Kevin Arnold, one of your hosts, with Always Positive, Jay, and somewhere around our airspace is audio. You may hear his voice on the other side of that proverbial glass. We're here tonight talking highs and lows of a Cleveland sports summer on The Voice of the Land and do have to go back down and talk about the upcoming NFL hearing for Deshaun Watson on what the length of the suspension could be. There's a lot of reports out there, and Jay, I know that you had kind of sent me some tweets from Mark Maskey, who had kind of 
explained the disciplinary process for how everything works. It kind yeah, of, it's very straightforward and very easy to understand the whole thing. Yeah, and I know people have gotten kind of confused by it, and you know, there's fans that are kind of got the blinders on. They just think, oh, it's only going to be four games. We're, we got Deshaun Watson. We got a much better quarterback than we had last year. Everything's all good. The NFL wants, it sounds like, wants to make an, an example. If you believe in all the reports, and it's when there's smoke, there's fire. They want to make an example out of Deshaun Watson, a possible indefinite suspension that it goes at least for one year. Or they want it to be heard that they want it that way. Got to look at it that way. Yeah, they want to protect the shield, basically protect the whatever power they think that one shield those, still holds. So they're saying one thing, knowing what's going to happen. So it's looking good for them. Like, oh, we wanted this, but we didn't get our way. Cause... And somehow reports will, you know, if it doesn't go their way, reports will get out there that it wasn't on them. Because we know what they really care about. Money, and that's it. What goes on What goes on at the offices in the NFL, in New York, and whatever, in sports we know that there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that's pretty shady. There's curtains, there's curtains upon curtains upon curtains covering up a lot of different stuff in sports. I'm not trying to make allegations against everybody. We just, we just know like we don't always get the full story. And even when stories break, there's other reports that downplay what that person said or what that reporter tried to say. Like there's discrediting of the media too, that or there's settlements and we don't hear the story at all. It's, it's a lot of hearsay. And we, I don't feel like we ever get the full story and we can keep asking for it we can keep asking these coaches and gms to give us exactly what their plan is for the draft or what what the nfl is going to do in in these type of circumstances with suspensions you're always going to get that say a lot by not saying anything so you know i'm gonna i don't know why we keep begging for it because it just it doesn't seem to doesn't doesn't seem to work I asked someone that once and i won't know names and i'm like why do you even bother asking the questions knowing that that they're not going to give you an answer. They're just like, we have to. It's, it's literally, we have to. We don't even, we know it's going to happen, the answer, yeah. but they have to. So. It's their job because yeah. even if the person doesn't say anything, it's how they say it that you kind of you kind of know. And then, or sometimes just what they don't say yeah. is what they're saying. And there's great reporters out there that do get, you know, pieces of the story that are necessary to know and for people to understand when they only think one way or the other. And again, I'll remind everyone before we get into suspension stuff. If you disagree, doesn't mean the people are that person is a bad person. That's where debate conversations have really gone off the rails. But speaking of of this suspension, hearing on Tuesday, you kind of looked at the uh, NFL process for so, how the discipline will come down. Just from your understanding of that, basically, I mean, what do you feel right now, Jay? Well, what the process is going to be is. Is it uh, Judge Sue Robinson? Yeah. And once she hears it and makes if she decides that if he is going against the personal conduct policy, then she'll give out her discipline and either the NFL or the NFLPA can appeal that to Roger Goodell. But if she finds that he did not break it, there's no appeal and it's over. It's done. He gets no suspension and nothing happens. So it's what I think is going to end up happening. I think she's going to end up saying that he did break the conduct policy because it's very vague, and I don't know how they process or what they believe is like the terminology yeah. of it all. Like, yeah, I don't know at all. But from what I'm what I understanding is, it's very vague and can cover like a, w a wide range of things. So who's going to get suspended? I think it's going to be pretty high what the nfl wants but not the whole nfl wants it's not going to be as low as the pa wants and then they're both going to appeal and i don't know what happens when they both appeal because roger goodell would he's known to do some weird things when it comes to suspensions and stuff yeah i mean again we don't we don't know what happened something <laughs> we all know that something doesn't feel right here with how many allegations how many civil suits came out and whether it's something doesn't feel right because there's a lot of people going for money or it doesn't feel right because we have someone that's going to represent this organization in the most important position in all of sports that has, you know, had some actions pushed to the side because, again, the NFL is all about not about second chances. It's about third, fourth, fifth, just almost uh, some behavior. Depending on how good you are. 
Yeah. If you're not very good, you get one chance, you're out. Some, you know, talent outweighs everything. Getting, exactly. And they're just not right. It's it's not. And people can say, well, that's just the way it is. And if you feel that way, that's fine. Because I'll tell you guys right now, if Ray Rice was still an elite running back, he would have been back in the league. You know why he didn't get back? Didn't have to make it. Like, you suck, so whatever, you're done. Yeah. Again, talent. Otherwise, he would have come back. Like, Greg Hardy, that dude kept coming back, coming back, coming back. Because he was good. But he was they, a complete... Because people, of crap, people saw potential and then saw the talent starting to come to fruition, but couldn't keep his head on straight. And, you know, but kept coming back and kept coming back, like you just said. And again, people that say, well, that's just how the NFL is, you know, got to get my fantasy football in, got to get my f- uh, football season in. That's, again, that's fine. I, if, I disagree with you because I don't think we should keep turning a blind eye. Now, we don't know what happened with Deshaun Watson because these are still allegations. He has still claimed innocence. He did s- settle with 20 of 24. Does that show guilt? I don't know because he's been wanting to prove his innocence, but I'm sure his team and the NFLPA have been telling him to settle so we can get to the suspension because the, the Browns NFL- are t- probably pressure because they want to know what they want to get to the suspension. They want to know how to game plan for the season. So right. he has the pressure of that, the pressure of yeah. just. His teams, the the fans, everything is on on this dude's shoulder. So I'm not going to say that's an admission of guilt. You know who believes that? If you thought he was guilty beforehand, yeah. now you're going to say that. And if you don't, you're not. And that's yeah, you're gonna of, f- it's not going to change anyone's opinion. It's just going to reinsure the other your opinion. Everyone's finding a way to fit in in the narrative. the The most frustrating part is like we don't know. We'll never know. We'll, no. we'll never know. Like I said. Him, those girls, and God are the only people that know. And then and and there's probably three stories that are all different. Probably yeah, God's the only real story. Yeah, and, and there's a grand, there's two grand juries that have not indicted him on federal charges. So if the if they haven't put him on federal charges in a civil suit now, if the NFL in their separate investigation now punishes him for an indefinite suspension that goes at least a year, it, or want want they want it to go at least a year, if not more. Then what do they know that the j- judicial system in our country doesn't know? And here's well, the civil civil's a lot easier to, to r- prove because it's it's really he said she said. And I think the I think one of the issues that we have is you're right. He was the grand juries are like there's not enough evidence for criminal charges. And my issue, like I get okay, we the NFL has a player conduct rule and they want to protect the shield, but I mean. To go and say, okay, we're going to suspend you because these things are alleged. You have he hasn't been found guilty of anything in the civil court, right? It's a ale- everything's alleged, but the punish. So what? I mean, what happens? They suspend him for a year. Say they suspend him for a year. Mm-hmm. He goes to court. He already settled twenty of the twenty-four. He goes to court the other four. He's found innocent. What is the NFL going to do? They can't turn back time and say, oh, chief, sorry, I guess you should have played because we were wrong. That. So we this none of this is proof. It's all hearsay, like we're all saying. Yep. The owners who should be held higher than the players. Yep. Robert Kraft, who was caught on tape, not nowhere near a punishment like that. That one. That one. That, that's proof. Like I'm, they know he did that. If you if you think stories have kind of just vanished from NFL and like the spotlight in the NFL, the off the field stories that one vanished quickly no one wants to bring that up dan snyder is like the biggest Roger scumbag G- in all sports and he owns a deep still roger goodell was in congress like talking about this people questioning why haven't you done it like why haven't dude, you brought him of to- all the things that dude did you know why only time there's getting action against him now it's because he stole money from the other teams yeah told you they only care about money and that is the, all they really care about is if their image is right, they get more money. Yeah. So there's so many different double standards in the oh NFL. My God, and it like, a and joke it, when it comes to double standards of them. It's like if you were to look up the word subjective in the dictionary, the NFL office should be the picture that <laughs> shows up under that word. I, it's I, I it's so hard to to kind of go through this, and there's people out there that are alleging these acts against them that if it happened like they're going through a lot and it took a lot for them to come forward then it gets pushed to the side or all this different hearsay and back and forth with suspensions and is he a good person is he not a good person now the focus on deshaun watson people 
continue pick people that have gone through acts like that that have actually happened, men or women, especially women. They become again. They go back into that shell of feeling afraid to come forward, and talk about that and make sure that justice is served. And I mean, I again, I'm not getting. I don't want to get political, but like what I'm sure women are going through right now in this country already, and what happened this week. I mean, it just feels like the NFL is the epitome of regression instead of pro- progression. It feels like when they progress, they take several steps back all the time because they are so subjective. And well, they should be the leaders of this uh, progression. Yeah, if you are the You're le- the most popular sport in this country. You should be the leaders of doing this stuff, what we need to change. There's a reason why the football I grew up loving most, the sport I grew up loving most, I still love that football, the original football over American football, not because of what the sport brings. I love watching the sport. I will break it down with anybody, and I try to learn as much as I can. I do play-by-play for it. But soccer will always be above. And there's there's issues with athletes there. There's issues with athletes in the NBA. Like, if talent is good enough, it'll always win out, and something needs to change around the sports world because sports is a big entity. The NFL is a big entity, like you just said, Jay. They are the leaders. You got to set the example and not be the example of the opposite side of the coin. The the only thing I'd say to that is the problem we, we face, right? The, and the problem with that is you you have to have some kind of proof, right? And that's I where, know, and that's where it gets so tricky. And and maybe what we really just need to do, not just sports, just in general, treat our women better. Oh, totally. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's to go on Twitter. That's two hundred percent. That's the most 300%. disgusting place in the world. How they treat women? Oh, out. Just, oh it just grosses me out. Like they, they can't even. Like I don't know. I was. You guys are probably raised the same way. You know, you treat women and children with much more respect than even men and yourself. You, they're yes. above. You put them above you. We're like, there's a reason when a boat's sinking, women and children go first. I think everybody has forgotten what the golden rule is. Or they follow the golden rule and they want to be treated horribly, so they treat others horribly. Who wants to go through life like that anyways? I don't know. I look at them, they're, they're, they're someone's mom, someone's grandma, someone's daughter, someone's aunt. I, ain't, I Anyone does anything mean to any of those people are, to me, I'm going to be upset. So I'm not going to do it to anybody else. Uh, I, I mean, I hate to get philosophical on everybody or, or going down a different track outside of sports, but we all know that life is more important than sports. PSA from the from VTL. Treat your women better. Treat others around you way better than we are right now. Again, prayers to progress, not regress, in this country and around the world. Treat your women better, please, please, please. Let's end the segment right on. We got to. That's, again, a low. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know with this case. It's, It's hard to talk about. It's our job to talk about it, just like it's the job of the media to ask the questions. But there's a point where you just got to you gotta move on and you got to go to a high. And maybe the dunk tank was a high moment in Jay's summer. Maybe I had, it's a low it point. It was for me, it was. Well, I had fun. Well, he'll explain why it was a high for him and a low for so many others. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about some of our favorite things to do at county fairs, church festivals, those type of events in the summer right here on The Voice of the Land on the Big Play Network. Are you looking for a career in manufacturing? Vector Technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has partnered with some of the biggest and the best companies throughout Northeastern Ohio. The recruiters at Vector Technical will coach you through the entire job process and will help you land an opportunity that you are truly excited about. Vector does not add any additional fees and offers benefits as well as free online skills training through Penn Foster. To learn more, visit www.vectortechnicalinc.com And make sure to check out our job board to see a full list of our current opportunities and apply. Oh, boy, those conversations in the break. Welcome (laughs) back. Show behind the show. Welcome back one final time live here on Sunday, June 20, whatever. I have no idea what. 26. 26, because it's been a long week after working our the ESPN Cleveland block party, doing all I could to help our team make it a great event for our fans. For 16 and a half hours, like so many other people that worked that day, shout out to all of you that uh, 
you know, all of my teammates out there. And shout out to everyone that came out and spent the whole day with us too. Yeah, like I spent the whole day pretty much. There. I didn't. Yes. I left just before the after party. I didn't. I woke up. I didn't have a single like alcoholic beverage. I would have. Oh. You would have told me. I, I would not have believed you that I drank a bottle of vodka because I felt so hungover <laughs> the next day. I'm like I'm exhausted and too much sun. I don't even remember what I did at work the next day. Oh, and then I had the sunglasses on the whole time. Now it's kind of faded, but I had the worst raccoon yeah. eyes I've ever seen. Yeah, the sun was it, it was a it was like a perfect day mm-hmm. weather wise and temperature wise. Just when that sun got to like its highest point, it was just over top of Old River Road. And it was over top of the main event, the main attraction of the evening. It was the dunk tank or the death tank as it's being known, but it raised a lot of money for Motley Crue, so it's okay. Yes. Jay, your experience, man. Well, Tell first, us the I story. got to follow Ham- Aaron Goldhammer, who was the number one target. And yes, that, he was. He got a big line and raised a lot of money. It was fun dunking him and watching everyone talk junk to him. And then I got to go. And unlike, if you've noticed everybody else out there, and I'll, if you're listening, I'm calling you all out, you're all a bunch of wusses. They're like, I don't want to be dunked. Don't dunk. Like, no, you, when you're up there, you get up there like you're playing baseball and you start talking your junk and you got to antagonize the people. You do, and I do it clean, yes. just like you see me playing my softball games. I'm pretty much a professional junk talker to people. And for always positive, Jay, you got to admit, I had a pretty good crowd going over there. Yeah. yeah. I haven't paid 20 bucks just to hit the button. I mean, <laughs> he's just like, all right. So, so Peter, I. You, you've worked with Holly before, and so she was kind of the person running it at the time. She was doing her shift, uh, taking the money and getting people all excited and bringing them over, telling them, like, how much it was and everything. And I just, like, called out as a joke because, you know, I was t- I took, like, one of my brief breaks of the day, very brief breaks, just to go see my buddy in the dunk tank and make sure he's okay. I, s- I just called out. I was like, hey, Holly, 20 bucks if you – I'll donate 20 bucks to Motley Crue right now if you just let me go up there and hit the button on my podcast partner. She was kind of hesitant because, you know, they weren't really letting people do that. And I get that. Don't want to entice the crowd to start doing that either. So I may have been like an influence on a bad behavior there. <laughs> people but were doing it left and right to beca- everybody, though. Because Tony Rizzo, also <laughs> one of the main hosts of the really big show, he he calls out. He goes, no, I'm in for that. Let him do it, Holly. She's like, okay, yeah, I mean, because you work here. Because Riz is enticing people to go up there and just hit the button if they're not doing it with the softball. So I paid the 20 bucks. I wanted to make sure I gave back to the dogs. That was more so what I wanted to do. And I just walked up, and Jay's, like, trash-talking someone else. And I go, hey, hey, look down here. Boom. I just smacked the button and, <laughs> and let him go with, with that great voice of Lancer, by the way. They had the yes. QR code on the back. Got a lot of compliments on that. Cool. Yeah, I don't know how many people scanned it, but yeah. definitely a lot of compliments. But uh, I did, you know, did go up there and do it legitimately as well. And Riz I did, got I did, an arm for an old man, he I'll does. tell you that much. He was, he was going up for, like, every teammate, every RBSer, like, the main fans of the show, the call-ins of the show. He's going up. He's like, 40 bucks. I'll take three. You take three. You take three shots. You take three. Like, you know, all of these, uh, he's paying all this money. He's one of the most giving people you'll ever meet. Like, you don't hear about the stuff he does behind the scenes, but he's one of the nicest guys. You got to credit him for a lot of the money that Mully Crew got because he Mm. was just paying and letting a lot of people participate. If they didn't have the cash to give back, he's like, I'll pay for you. Go up there. If you want to dunk him, go on. And then Emmett, Golden. You're supposed to be a pitcher in high school. He's always talking about he's a great pitcher in high school. Dude. (laughs) <laughs> Glue factory, bro. Like I told you on the thing, couldn't think six uh, throws from not even twenty feet away, and you couldn't hit the target. Yeah, Emmett. But there love were... you, bro. But you got no aim. For... Yeah, the, the son got all the, the the sports talent in that family now. Yeah, he was probably too big for the dunk tank though. Cause I think oh yeah, he hurt his toe. So I, uh, hammer hammer got hurt. pulled his leg. Yeah. Emmett, who's like six four, every time he hit, he kept coming down and slamming his toe into the bottom, mm. and He's like, his one toe is just all bruised up. Uh, Riconia, as he was trying to stop himself, he grabbed the gate, sliced his hand from here to here open. So then it's all bloody and gross. Thank God I'm before him. Yeah, Someone, Oh, and then Fontana's up there, and halfway getting up, his, his co-host comes by. I wonder where he got that idea from. Danny Cunningham hits it. He's out there. He's like dangling up and stuff, almost <laughs> gets them all hurt. I'm like, oh, my God, this, this death tank is bad. So it's like 6 o'clock, and everyone is gliding back up for Hammer. And after this, everyone's just sore and like kind of beat up from that. It was been in this death tank, and I'm out to eat with Riz, his wife, and a couple other people. And Hammer, he's like, 
you got to eat. You haven't ate all day. You got to eat. Otherwise, you're gonna, you're just not going to make it. So he makes him eat, and he's like, oh, we got to go. And Riz just like, no, calls someone up top. He's like, no, no, no. yeah, you don't got to go in the duck tank no more. I'm like, that guy's got some power over there. Because <laughs> like, he just told that line, like, screw you guys. My man is hurt, and he needs to eat. And Those people that say, like, let me call a guy. let me call someone. And they make that call and like get it, it just right happens away. It instantly. just happens. Like you know that they got the they got the yeah, power. He's got, got a little power. He's got a little, you know. Hey, it's it's Tony Rizzo. I mean, like he's been been in the industry for over thirty years. Like you know, he knows a guy or two. No, knows a person or but two. Yeah, it it reminded me of like you were talking about the fair, which I was just saying. And it's so odd because you were like, oh, let's talk about fairs. Because earlier in the day, I was telling Tiffany, I'm like, I just have a craving for that lemonade and an oh. elephant ear. So bad. Oh, the lemonade's got to be made right, though. Like, if they put too much sugar in it or too much ice, like, mm -hmm. you know you're at a good fair when you get a good lemonade. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, that's just... But also, like, church festival foods, like, when people are making, like, this homemade food, or, like, the, from the spaghetti dinners, you got the rigatoni. Um, I know the Mark Carmel Festival in Wycliffe, that just came back this year. Um, they had that on Friday. I wasn't in town for it. But they did it at the INA Hall, like where I had, uh, where Jana, Jana and I had our reception. Um, you know, the bocce courts are down there when they had the big bocce tournament. So it was, it was probably a good time and a lot of good food. But I mean, it used to have like all the rides and all the different food stands. You got three different bands coming up each day, each night. It was Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and it was only one night. And I get it's coming back from COVID, but I haven't seen any pictures. I don't know how that one was. I was down in Harrison County, which is about 45 minutes from the border of you know, Wheeling, West Virginia, and getting into uh, Pennsylvania as well. Kind of you can cross almost three states in a matter of a few minutes once you get there. Um, and I had a blast. Like, I, I was posting on my Instagram story and my Snapchat stories truck and tractor pools. And, like, I got to see a demolition derby live and in person for the first time. Like, I've always wanted to see one. We missed it last year. Like, I was loving it, man. You want, you want to see one of those? I want to be in one. I want to be in a Devil's Derby so bad. I was going to say, they have, because Lake County Fair, yeah. at least, I don't know if they're doing it this year, but I know that uh, in the past they've done the Devil's Derby. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, because my buddy who you know owns the building here, he, uh, 650 Gold, they sponsored, I think, a car one year. They had a whole big thing down there, and... Uh, I know I got to, like I told you guys before the show, I'm going to be working, parking people on at the uh, Lake County Fair. So what's your guys' favorite food at the fairs? Oh, what about wow. you, Peter? Yeah, that's a good man, one. I love elephant ears are great, but some, for some reason, man, I love getting like the, the big gyro from Ooh, the food trucks at yeah. the fair. For some reason, they just taste better. Yeah, I mean, there's just things at carnivals that... The fries, stuff like that, they're just yeah. different there. Yeah. Like the lemonade. You can't get that lemonade except for in no, fairs. No, and they, they tend to make it more right than when you get those those same kind of food stands like at the air show mm -hmm. or bigger events like that. When you still see like the carnival type or fair type food stands, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem as right as when you go to an actual like county fair or church festival. Jay, what's your favorite food? All of it. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All, like I got problems when it goes to those things, like because I can't ride spinny rides. Like when you guys go there, like I'll just get instantly sick. So I, my favorite thing to do is just get stuffed with everything. I gotta have a corn dog because corn dogs mm. from there are just they just hit different. You have to have an elephant ear. Gotta have three to four lemonades, um, deep fried Oreos. That's like, where I was going. Like and I. Didn't even experience those until last year at the Harrison County Fair. They're dangerously delicious. I haven't had one of those yet. And yeah, I'm, you, you um... don't. Once you turn to the dark side, there's no going back. And like, next thing you know, you're getting batter, and you're gonna have your own little deep fryer at home. And be like, <laughs> what else can I deep fry? I I thought about it too late. I was gonna kind of do like a contradiction. I should have brought my gluten free Oreos, even though they d dip it in batter. Mm. At least half the thing was gluten free. Mm. Because I kind of have a bit of an allergy, at least an intolerance. I, you know, I don't know if I got the allergy yet. My dad does have celiac disease. Got to remember to get tested. You guys got to remind me. So what's yours? Because you have so many allergies. It's it's tough right right now to find that that one thing. But I mean, since I can still tolerate a little bit, like if I stay pretty good, like 
at the Harrison County Fair, they actually have a Chinese food stand, and they have one of the best plates of chicken fried rice I have ever had. Wow. And I'm not, I'm not just blowing smoke. Like seriously, for me, because I did, I grew up not liking Chinese Chinese food or um, that kind of stuff. My dad, my family loved it, but I was like very picky eater. I'm a very picky. Like I gotta stay s- strict to like these three meals become more adventurous now when it comes to the food game and i've had to because i gotta find things that are gonna <laughs> fill me up <laughs> not being able to eat dairy or gluten they have one of the best plates of that that i've ever had but just in general the deep fried oreos or a good hot soft pretzel is where oh, i would typically yeah. go like if i'm taking out all the al- allergies from all time just going through mm-hmm. my years good hot soft pretzel with the cheese cup like being the right kind of cheese. Every Browns game I go to, I have that's like the first thing it is pretzels <laughs> and cheese. I'm like, all right, pretzel cheese. Get my refillable cup of pop, and I'm good. And then whatever else is just extra. So, favorite ride? Boy, um, I mean, I'm starting to get to the point where Dramamine's got to be like. <laughs> so you're like my, me. You can't do spinny stuff. I too can't, good. man. I got, I got sick, man. I, I, I wish this weekend was more fun than it was but it was worth it because i did it for the little cousins you know they wanted to go on the rides they wanted to kind of get time with Jana. they wanted to get time with me so i made sure i went on didn't realize how much of a spinning ride it was this one they had us going for seven minutes though it was like an octopus type ride that had like eight different arms for some reason they only were filling two carts at a time so then you're waiting seven more minutes for the ride to go Mm. But it was like, so the whole contraption spun, and then, like, it, the it wasn't car, one of those yeah. where you could spin it yourself. The car spun itself. Oh. Because by the by the way that the, the whole contraption So it wasn't moved, your favorite ride. No, it was my least favorite <laughs> ride because I was sick for about three hours. Luckily, I made it to the truck and truck you like? like uh, do you like a Ferris wheel? Oh, I love the Ferris wheel. Um, I mean, if I take the Dramamine, I'm okay. Like, I just, I don't want to go on a ride that they're going to, like, have you going forever and just spinning in circles all over and over and over again. I need a little bit more variation, or, or at least traditional-type uh, Ferris wheel. Um, at fairs and festivals, I mean, there's a lot of just spinny rides. I'll, I guess my favorite ride, actually, coming to coming to my mind, because I kind of compared... Are you going to steal mine? <laughs> I'm it, like waiting. I'm like, it was the, the ride I rode yesterday was the closest to it, but it's the exact opposite of what I'm looking for, or the exact opposite feeling. The scrambler. I don't. The scrambler. For some the, reason, it's one of the spinny rides. That, not my my favorite, but it does not get me sick because like it's so fun. Like get so close like, to that person whoa, that's next to you, and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. The, you like want to high five the people and yeah. stuff. The Scrambler has been one of my favorites. How about Peter, you, Peter? Are you no, I, rides? I love the Scrambler, but I mean, same thing. Like I used to ride those all the time, but yeah. now I can ride them a few times, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Um, but I also love, you still love the uh, Tilt the Whirl. Mm-hmm. Mm. That was always fun because you could spin it. But I'm thinking, I went on one similar to you over at Waldemere, the park in mm-hmm. Erie, PA, and it was like the Spider, and it had a bunch of arms, and yeah, it like it tilted, you know, and went up in the air, and. I rode that once, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I rode it a second time, and I'm like, yeah, I could, I could be done with this now. I also don't trust carny rides as much as I used <laughs> yeah. to. They're, like, not yeah. as, they're not as secure as I remember them being. <laughs> they, they are not. Like, there was a Ferris wheel last year that I went on that, uh, you know, have you ever seen the ones, the, the ride that has, like, the two sides, and you're kind of, like, back-to-back with the person, and it, like, goes up, and you kind of like flip upside down, and then it's almost like a pendulum kind of going up and down, up and down. This Ferris wheel had that element where, the again, the contraption that you're in was gated, so it was all compact, but you didn't feel secure, and the thing started spinning <laughs> along with the entire contraption. Sickest I've ever been after two rides. <laughs> but, I mean, each of those two rides. I I gotta, I gotta know that I'm getting older, guys, and start, it uh, you know, start being a little honesty. Again, I want to help out the kids and and give them a good time, but I gotta remember the Jeremy. I mean, that's that's my biggest. Well, I'm gonna thing. answer this, and I got one more question for us. But my favorite ride, and I go there now. I love bumper cars, still, man. <sighs> I absolutely love it, and I am the guy. I will single one person out, no particular reason. I will torture that person. <laughs> I'm going to failure. Bam! And I'm like, all right, we'll suck around. And I'm going to get him again. Now I, I know just, why he wants to go in a demolition derby. Exactly. <laughs> I, I do like bumper cars. What's your What's your last question for us? Favorite carny game? 
Oh, for now me- they're all like just masters of tricking us, feeling like you're gonna win. But I love carny games, man. So I have two, and I can give them right off the bat. If there's a basketball game, I yes. gotta go play Same. every single time. Every time I go to Cedar Point, they got the new three point contest thing mm. where you go all the way around. Yes, I do it three times. I do it once at the beginning, once in the uh, middle of the day, and by the end of the day, I can barely shoot, but I still try. I mean, I used to be given like a certain amount of money to go to festivals, and that all that money be spent on just playing the basketball game because I would just keep trying. Like, I want that. I want that prize. I want that prize. The other one is I don't know if it's at other. It's been at other carnivals or fairs. But I remember it at my church's festival, Our Lady of Mark Carmel in Wycliffe. It was the birthday game where you'd put like a quarter down or like a something down on your birth month or one of the months, whatever. Mm-hmm. And you throw a ball and it kind of like bounce around just like you see like in like fish mm-hmm. bowls or whatever. Um, there's variations of the game now. But you like the ball gets thrown. If it lands in whatever you have your thing down on, you win one of the prizes up top. And that was one of the easiest ones to play and most likely lose that, but also got a lot of my stuffed animals from that growing up. So that's just like one of my the memories that pop in my head when you say a carnival game or a fair game like that. Just memories of that with my family just pop in my head. So my one of mine was, uh, and I don't know if I've seen it at the carnival so much, but at uh, at the old Jaga Lake, they had the one with the plates, and you had to toss a coin onto the have it land on the plate to win the prize, mm. and I got really good at just flipping that coin so it would kind of bounce and, like, hit the edge and then bounce back into the Meanwhile, they're so, spraying the top with yeah, 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 and like, stuff. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, like, at the St. John Vianney Festival in Mentor, uh, one of the game that's fun to play, the kids play, there's two that come to mind. One is the Plinko. Oh, they yeah. Have the, the Plinko. And it's fun for the little kids because they get to climb up the, the steps and go and drop the it's, thing down. It's kind of coming back, too. I've yeah. seen it in, like, a lot of different different things. Why have I never seen this? Because I've always wanted to play Plinko. Where is this game? Yeah, and, like, you can't, you can't like, put Plinko up top, like, I mean, doing yeah, street team events. Yeah, like, we yeah. have, like, a Plinko game, but it's not called Plinko. Plinko yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the same idea, Those yeah. copyrights. Uh, and the other one they have, which is fun, is the uh, the duck races. Oh yeah, the, the, the little duckling yeah. races that they Mark those, I mean, those two. Yeah, yeah, I mean they're it's it's silly, but it's fun. I mean they're yeah. also fun, like just the water gun where you're blowing up the balloon. Yep. That's fun. Yep. The machine gun, BB gun where you got to okay. shoot the star out. It's awesome. So what's your favorite? But my favorite now it's two. One and I've, I've never won it. We're so but bad. I'm at still it. trying. We're this. so bad at this. We oh. always say like, "What's your favorite?" We don't say favorites. We say favorite. So like, as an adult, my ten. <laughs> as an adult, my favorite still because I have to do it and I spend so much money is the barrel mm. that you got to throw the softball. And I've actually watched the YouTube video. So this next time I see one, I'm gonna see if, I, if they're right. I'm gonna get it finally. But as a kid. I love the arcade room. That was just the best. Oh. The best thing about the fair, and when I lived in Garth, because I was right by the park, we would go there, and they just have all the games. They have the X-Men game, the Simpsons four-player mm-hmm. game. Then you get all the bike racing games and stuff. They just had a whole room set up with all the arcades in the world. I was good to go for hours after that. You know, the biggest draw to the Mont Carmel Festival every year when it was before COVID, it was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The biggest draw outside of the music stage where everybody was dancing and stuff, a lot of good bands, local bands coming in, it was inside in the community center and the casino. The the, the casino yep. type stuff that they set up. Like that raised a lot of money for the church that way. That was, <laughs> I don't know. Like When my friends got to college, like that was the room that they – like that's where they wanted to go to. It was always like the the hangout for you know all the kids and stuff, like the – Either when you're in middle school, you're still going on the rides. When you're in high school, you're kind of going around to the different foods and everything. For some reason, once we got to college, it was like, let's go into the casino. Like, I don't want to do that. Like, I'm still in middle school. I want to go on the rides, guys. <laughs> like, my mind's still back right the, there. Every time you say that, as soon as you said it, all I think about is those millions of those pool tab things, yeah. cardboard pool tabs, all over the ground. There's like, there'd be spots that just like, you didn't even see the floor. They're just covered in those pool tabs. And like, dude, I mean, there's a trash can right there, guy. <laughs> like, yeah. So our summer activity of the week that we're kind of promoting this week, get out to your local county fairs, church festivals, get back to it because 2022 feels like we're getting back to somewhat of an old normal than a new normal. Go support local, local businesses, local eateries, and the money that's kind of being given back to, to charities as well. If you see me at one, feel free to buy me a lemonade. No, you can buy everybody else lemonade. (laughs) (laughs) But We'll have another activity next week, trying to promote one every single week. 
That's going to wrap it up, though, for this edition, this week's edition of The Voice of Land. We, we will be back next week. Not a pre-recorded show. We're going to be live. I know everybody's going to be doing their 4th of July stuff. If you want to take a second, pop on in, join in on the show. We'll also, be right before the fireworks go off. And a nice hour to kill right before you watch all the fireworks on Sunday. Yeah, a couple hours, man. The sun's not going down. They can't shoot them off until like 9.45, exactly. 9.30. Got plenty of time to watch the show. Plenty of time. 7 to 8 every single Sunday night right here or just keep tuning in to the audio or the replays throughout the week and share your stories of getting out to your local fair or festival, what your favorite rides, food, whatever it may be. Hit us up on Twitter at Kevin seven at always positive J at LPV productions and at VTL underscore pod for always positive J and our producer extraordinaire audio. I'm Kevin. O reminding all of you sports fans out there. Don't let anyone ever tell you it's just a game. We truly love everyone. 3000. And as our great late, friend mike allen always used to say live life all gas no breaks we'll see you next time right here on the voice of land all part of the big play family